night upon the sea. A ship was tossing to and fro. Breakers dashed on every hand. Angry winds around it blow. All on board were filled with fright as the mighty billows rolled. Then they called upon the one who the winds and waves controlled. When he reaches out his hand, Billow ceased at his command. Winds and waves obey his will. When he says to them, be still, what man is this they all did say? That the winds and seas obey. He's the one who sails with me. He's the master of the sea. Though the storms of life may rage and the billows round you roll, he can calm our troubled sea as he did in days of old. As upon my sea you sail, trust in him who never fails. I'm so glad he sails with me. He's the master of the sea. When he reaches out his hand, Bill sees at his command. Winds and waves obey his will. When he says to them, be still. What man is this? They all the say that the winds and seas obey. He's the one who sails with me. He's the one who sails with me. He's the master of the sea. Montana, they hate people from California. Amen. Montanans hate Amen. Californians. And I said, uh, how far are you from Canada? He's about 60 miles from Canada. Do you ever go up there very much? Well, he goes up once in a while, but the Canadians hate the Montanans. <laughs> so, you know, they get what they got coming. However, uh, though he's from Montana and we're from Ohio, uh, we love Brother Nathan Bemis mostly because of the preaching of the Word of God and the spirit that he has about him. Lord bless your brother. And preach the word. All right. I had a good time today. It's good to see you here. And I'm going to do something strange. I've never done this before. Well, I've done a lot of things strange. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm going to do something strange. 
I uh, want your piano player to come back to the piano. Where, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Oh, come on. There, there's another one on this side, isn't there? Come on, yeah, you on this side. Two, take two to play this thing. All right. Now, uh, I want you to take your Bible, because I'm going to preach on a song tonight. I'm going to preach on a song. That's what I'm going to preach on. I'm going to preach on a song. So take your song book. Take your song book and uh, turn to page 166. Where's the song leader? Where's the song leader at? Come on. Come on, song leader. Where did he go? Come on. You come on up here because I can't lead songs or sing. But I want you to, before we sing the song, I just want to sing the first verse and the chorus. I want to preach. This is what I want to preach about. It's a major thing in a person's life if they're saved. And it's so major in an unsaved man's life that he'll go to hell without it. He'll go to hell without it. Let's sing uh, number, what did I say? 166. 166. Go ahead. on, take your Bible, or take your songbook, and right there, right down in the, can we write in the songbook, brother? Other? Hosea, Hosea chapter 4, Hosea chapter 4, 1 through 3, write it down in your songbook, take your pen, and that songbook you had in your hand, write it, Hosea chapter 4, 1 through 3. Right there in, in the margin of your songbook. We're, we're going to do a wild thing tonight. But <laughs> you say, what for? Because a Christian has got to do this continually. Now, in that song, it says, Nothing between, nothing, nothing between my Lord and me. Nothing between us. Right in the margin of your songbook, no controversy. No controversy of any kind. No controversy of any kind between you and God. Hosea chapter 4, verse 1 says, Hear the words of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for, now underline it in your Bible, for the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. The Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land because there is no truth, no mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land by swearing, lying, killing, Stealing, committing adultery, and breaking out in blood, touching blood. Therefore shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish. And the beast of the field, and the fowls of heaven, yea, the fish of the sea also, shall be what? Take it away. Why did God do all those things? Because there's a controversy of some kind. Write it down. Don't let a controversy of any kind be between you and God about anything. Let's go to the Lord of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that this evening you'll just please wash my heart. Lord, I pray that you would just 
cleanse my heart in the blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray there be no controversy of any kind between you and me. And Lord, you know that I'm dumb. And Lord, you know I'm stupid. And sometimes, Lord, I just don't pay attention. And Lord, sometimes I'm just not uh, thinking. And Lord, sometimes I'm just not uh, listening to you. And Father, I pray that you'd just open up my heart and open up my mind. Lord, I pray that there would be absolutely no controversy of any kind, Father, between you and me about any matter. On Lord, especially if there's a controversy with some lost soul on the road to hell tonight, Father. I pray that they would settle that controversy tonight. In Jesus' precious name I pray, and for his sake, amen. Now, I want you to take your Bible right there in, in Hosea. If you're there in Hosea, say amen. All right. I want you to take and I want you to underline some things, and I want you to see some things that cause a controversy. There's a cause, there's a course, and there's a curse and a cure for the controversy. And there's things that cause something. And if you can figure out what causes the controversy, you've got the thing licked half the time. Now, take your pen, and in Hosea chapter 4, verse 1, I want you to un uh, circle or uh, mark the first word right there is after controversy with the inhabitants of the land. The next word says what? Because. 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 What follows because is going to do what? going to show you what causes the controversy. This is what the controversy is about. Because there is no what? Truth. Now if you take your Bible and turn to the Gospel of John chapter 17, take your Bible and turn to John chapter 17, you'll see something that's aimed at a Christian. John, the Gospel of John chapter 17 and look what it says in verse 17. And, and turn to the verse. Please turn to the verse. John chapter 17. And verse 17 says, Now take your pen and underline something. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is what? Truth. It says because there is no truth then there's a controversy with the Christian when he does not read his Bible, he does not memorize the Bible, he does not meditate upon the Bible, he does not study the Bible. Then there is a controversy between you and God. Because you know what you are, you know what you've done? You've taken that book and you've despised that book. You're not reading it, you're not meditating upon it, and you're not studying it. You say, the preacher's supposed to study it. Yes, he is. He's supposed to study it. He absolutely is. It's his job. But you know something, you as a Christian, the Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And you as a Christian... That you stop reading your Bible and you put your Bible up on the shelf and you go days and days and days and days without reading your Bible and you've never read your Bible. You know something? There's a controversy between you and God. There is. You have to face it. You have to get it hit it head on, man. And if you don't hit it head on, brother, there is going to be a controversy between you and the Lord of God. Because He expects you to read it. Now... Uh, take your Bible and read a little bit further. And it says, Because there is no truth, neither, what's the next word? Mercy. Mercy. Then, what does you and I have to do? We have to show mercy towards, who do we have to show mercy towards? The sinner. There's no mercy. When's the last time you saw somebody get saved? When's the last time you led somebody to the Lord? No mercy! You show mercy on them, folks. You know how you show mercy on them? You put up with them. You put up with them. You don't say nothing. You just keep your mouth set. You show mercy towards them. Get them saved. Now again. Now again. It says, Nor knowledge of God. In first, in, over there in the New Testament, it says, uh, Some have not the knowledge of God, and I speak this to your... Shame. Shame. 
again, there is a controversy between you and God. But you know something? There can be a controversy about all kinds of things in the Christian life. All kinds of them, hundreds of them. Millions of them pop up in a Christian's life and they become a controversy between you and God. You can get a controversy. Uh, take your Bible and turn to Hebrews. Turn to Hebrews and turn to Hebrews chapter 12. Here's one particular subject that a person can get a controversy going between them and God on. Turn to Hebrews chapter 12 and uh, verse uh, 15. Uh, Hebrews 12, 15. Looking diligently, Hebrews twelve fifteen. Looking diligently, least any man fail at the grace of God, least any root. Now take your pen and underline the next word of what bitterness. Now take your pen and draw a line back to where it says in verse fifteen. It says any a n y any 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 root of bitterness. It don't matter why if you're justified or not. It don't matter if you say, Preacher, I got all the right in the world to be mad at so and so and so. I got all the right in the world to be bitter against him. I am justified. Lord says, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Any root of bitterness. So what if you're right? Said if any root of bitterness sprung up in you and troubled you, and thereby thereby many be defiled. You're to, you'll defy other people to you. Put, take your heart up to God and say, Lord, I will no longer be bitter about it. Lord, I will forgive and forget. And Lord, there will be no controversy between you and me in any matter. Then you can get it settled. You can get it settled. All right. And it just goes on and on and on. The different subjects. Jealousy. Envy. Just on. The Bible's plumb full of them. Just covered with them. But I want to preach this morning, on this, this evening, on what causes a controversy. What causes a controversy? There's a cause, there's a course, there's a curse, and there's a cure of a controversy. Take your Bible and turn to the book of Genesis, and uh, turn to Genesis chapter 1, uh, 2, Genesis chapter 2, and uh, Genesis chapter 2, and look at verse 17. Genesis 2, 17. Genesis chapter 2, verse 17 says, But of the tree of knowledge and good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely, what? Die. Now what did God tell Adam? Did Adam get ten commandments? Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not bear false witness. Did Adam get ten commandments? He didn't get ten commandments. He got one commandment. One thing Adam was told not to do. And the Lord said, As long as you don't do this, Adam, we'll walk in fellowship and there'll be no controversy between you and me. What did Adam you do? Adam, you know what Adam did. Adam went out there and disobeyed God Almighty and he took of that tree and the second he took of that tree, there was a controversy. He disobeyed God. There's a controversy between you and God the second you disobey Him. Now, what really caused the controversy? Now let's read a little bit further. In uh, Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3, and uh, verse 7. And the eyes of them both were opened. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together. And made themselves aprons. Now take your pen and underline what caused the controversy. He disobeyed God. And then what did he do? He took one over to the fig tree. And immediately he started pulling leaves off the fig tree. And he sewed an apron together for Eve. And he sewed an apron together for himself. And he covered his sin. Do you know what causes a controversy between you and God? Is you cover your sin. You cover it up. You hide it like Adam hid it. People, you have got to take and pour your, your heart out to God and not cover the sin. We cover it. We hide it. Take your Bible and turn to the book of Job. Turn to Job chapter 31. Now consider Adam taken of that fig leaf tree 
and making himself some aprons and hiding and covering up his sin with the fig leaves, which is a type of self-righteousness. And turn to Job chapter 31 and uh, look at what it says in verse 33. Job chapter 31 and verse 33 says, uh, Job uh, 31, 33. If I... Now take your pen and underline that next thing, wherever my pen went. Uh, verse 33. If I what? Cover my transgression as Adam by hiding my iniquity in my... Where? Where did he hide it at? In my bosom, inside. You know how we do? We cause a controversy. We get in some sin or another. And then we don't confess the sin and we don't take care of the sin and there's a controversy there. You say, how's that? You sinned and then you didn't confess that sin that day. And then when you went to bed at night and you knelt beside your bed like this and you knelt beside your bed, you said, dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful day and Lord, I sure appreciate it and thank you. Amen. You go to bed. Get up in the morning and you say, Lord, thank you for this good day and, and Lord, keep me safe today and thank you and Amen. And you never talk to God about your sin. You don't confess your sin. And then the day goes by. And then another day goes by. And you still haven't confessed that sin. And then another day goes by. And you still haven't confessed it. What's going to happen? I know what you're going to do. You're just like me. You're going to forget. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. You'll forget. You'll forget that you even sin. And the Lord will say, Hey! What about that thing right there? You say, oh, what thing, Lord? What, what, what thing? And you go on days and days and days. And thank God you come to church. Thank God you come to church. You know why you come to church? Because that preacher is going to preach in your sin. He's going to hit it. He's going to hit it. He's going to nail it. And then he's going to give an invitation. And on that invitation, the Lord's going to say now, that's you. And He wants you to get out of your pew and come down to this altar and He wants you to confess that sin and put it under the blood of Jesus Christ and get it right. And there'll be no controversy! But until that controversy is settled, the Lord is against you. You say, you'll take me to heaven. Sure, he will. But there comes a controversy in there in between Him and the Lord just say, hey, are you going to do anything about it? Are you going to do anything about it? What are you going to do about it? And you've hid it in your heart. Bible says if I hide iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not. You got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. So what you got to do? You got to name the sin. You got to name it. You got to come forward. You got to get right down there and you got to put the name on it. The world puts on it. You know what people do? They beat around the bush. They said, dear Lord, I made a mistake today. You didn't make a mistake. Come on. You told a dirty, rotten lie. Don't you call it a mistake. You lied to your wife. You lied to her. And that's not a mistake. That's a dirty, rotten lie. If you don't believe it, ask her. She say, no mistake, you were lying, bud. You know what you got to do? You got to come to the Lord and you got to say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, was I just lying. I was lying. I covered it up. I didn't want to get caught. I was lying. Lord, I asked a dirty, rotten lie. Please wash it and put it under the blood of Jesus Christ. And may there be no controversy between me and you. All kinds of things can cause a controversy. You know what caused that controversy right there with Adam? He hid it. He hid it. That's what's going on with a lot of Christians. They're hiding their sin and then they're forgetting about it. Don't even remember it. So when that preacher preaches on sin or the Holy Spirit comes by and he puts something in your mind sometime or another that you did, don't you just say, well, yeah, I did that. Don't you do that. You say, yes, Lord, I did that. Lord, it's wrong. It's sinful. Lord, God, it's wicked. Oh, God, help me. Oh, help me. Help me. Help me. Don't you do like Adam did. You should preach any sin? Yeah. Take your Bible and turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Keep your finger in Genesis a minute because I'm going to come back. There's a cause. And there's a course, there's a curse and a cure. But turn to uh, Ecclesiastes. Uh, Psalms, Proverbs, 
uh, Ecclesiastes and turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and look what it says in verse 1. Ecclesiastes 10.1 If you're there, say amen. If you're not there, hurry up. <laughs> Dead flies. Dead flies. That, I mean, that's clear, isn't it? I killed a fly today on my hand right there. Shirley says, Eck! <laughs> Dead flies. You take that dead fly and you pop it right in there. And then you pop another one in there. Dead flies. Just a little fly. Just a little fly. It's not a big one. Is it a little fly? How many say it's a little fly? Say amen. A little bitty one. Brother Art was going like this at the table the other day. And that fly was a little, you could hardly see it. <laughs> He'd come on my side, I went like that, and he finally he went back over there, and that was too late, and <coughs> he's gone for. He's just a little bit old thing. Did you get the point? Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking saber. So here's an apothecary. Apothecary is that thing that's a medicine jar, and it's a medicine jar that has medicine in it. And the dead flies gotten in the apothecary jar. And then it stayed there a while and rotted. And then now it's starting to stink. And it's stinking. I mean, stinking something terrible. Just do old sin. How many times did the devil tell you, well, it's just a little sin? Just a little one? Yeah, it's only one, two. He's in the apothecary jar. Now look at it again. Did flies cause the ointment of the pocketary to send forth a stinking favor? So do us a little folly. Him that is in reputation of wisdom and honor. Now are you in reputation of wisdom and honor? Look at here. You're called a Christian. A Christian is connected with the name of Jesus Christ, the greatest name on the face of this earth. You're a Christian. That's a reputation of honor. And if anybody, anybody says, that's a little sin, then he's failed to realize that there's a controversy between him and God. Just a little one. You know, it all depends on what the little one is. Suppose I take that right there and I pour acid in that. Just a little old drop of acid. It starts boiling, boiling and boiling and I go, just a little drop. It goes down inside me and eats my guts out. And I die at the hospital. Only a little drop of sin! You would swallow the cushions? They don't they don't realize that God looks at sin different than they do. God looks at sin and God hates sin. And you know what you and I do? We look at sin and go, <laughs> Oh, ain't so bad! It's almost fun! Oh, yes. Oh, yes, bud, and that's you. Because you don't look at it saying, God don't look at it that way. God looks at it and says, oh, oh, no, 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 my son, my son, no, 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 my son, no, 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 no. You haven't come your sin for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. And there is a controversy between you and God. Now again, take your Bible turn to the book of Genesis. Turn to the book of Genesis. And turn to Genesis chapter... Uh, three Genesis chapter 3 and see something out about this cause there's a cause there's a course there's a curse and there's a cure Genesis chapter 3 now turn there because you need to know there's a controversy the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land now Genesis chapter 3 and uh, I want you to see I want you to look at uh, verse uh, 11 and it said, let's pick up verse 9. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Now think about that a minute. God is in the garden. How many of you know God knows everything? God knows my thoughts. He knows absolutely everything. 
what in the world is God asking Adam, 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 where art thou? Well, man, you know where he is. Why even ask him? You know why God's doing that? Because God just expecting and hoping and just just have his hopes up that Adam will say, Oh God, oh God, oh God, I've sinned, I've sinned, oh God, I took of the tree, oh God, I took of the tree. That's what he's hoping for. And he's given him that, that allowance to, to get the thing right. Why did he just say, I know where you are, bud, come out here, I'm going to nail your hide. He didn't say that. He didn't say that at all. God is ready to forgive and forget in a heartbeat. He wants you to ask. Adam! Adam! Where art thou? And Adam does. What does Adam do? How does he hide his sin? He hides it, but what else, do he, he, what else does he do? Look at Genesis chapter 3, and look at verse 10. And he said, I heard the voice of the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. And I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree which I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, You better pay attention to what Adam says. You know why? Because your guy will do the same thing Adam does. Now how do men get a controversy between themselves and God? What did Adam do? He said, It's her fault. Didn't he? Look at it. Genesis chapter 3 verse 12 And the man said, The woman... Whom thou hast given to be with me. The woman. You know what? You know how people get a controversy going? They blame somebody else. They say, God, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. It's their fault. You blame somebody else. It's a preacher's fault. It's his fault. (laughs) We always blame. We we get blamed, brother. (laughs) Don't we? It ain't my fault. It ain't his fault. It ain't her fault. Ain't the boss's fault. They blame the boss. It's the boss's fault. Yes, sir. He fired me because it's his fault. I don't think so. I don't think it's the boss's fault. You know what they do? They say it's the teacher's fault. It's the teacher's fault. She's a dummy. She's not any good. Get rid of the teacher. It's the teacher's fault. You know what they do? They blame the deacon. They blame some other Christian. They put the blame some other place. No, Christian, you can't put the blame on somebody else. You have to say, Lord, I have sinned. You have to take the credit yourself. You've got to stop blaming somebody else. People who do that all their lives. School teacher, the job, the boss, and the mama's fault, daddy's fault, and everybody's fault but my fault. You go all the way through your life. And you know what you got is a controversy between you and God. Oh, that Adam would have come out of that behind them fig leaf trees and come out of there and said, Oh God, you know what I've done? I've sinned against you and it's my fault. I had a free choice. I didn't have to take of it. Lord, I did take of it. I shouldn't have taken of it. It's a sin against you. And oh God, forgive me. Oh God, forgive me. Oh God, forgive me. He didn't do that. He blamed her. You know what you do? You get with you get with your ma- your husband and your wife, and you have a controversy between your wife and your husband. You've had a few, yes, you have. I have two, and you have two. Don't lie to me; I know better. And then, if you're not careful, you know what you do? You blame her, or she blames him, and they won't take no blame for their vows. I believe you're at a little bit at fault yourself. Amen and amen. I believe you're a little bit fault at yourself. Don't you put all the blame on her. I think you have to say, I messed up too. Now we want to do that. We always want to blame somebody else for it. Take your Bible, look a little bit closer. Uh, look at, uh, look, take, better yet, take your Bible and turn to Job chapter 13. Job chapter 13. Turn to Job chapter 13 and look what it says in uh, verse 23. Job chapter 13 and verse 23. And it says, 
How many are my what? Sins. You know, who's praying that? Job's praying that. Job is praying and he says, How many are my sins? Now, what does he say? Make me to know my transgressions and sins. Good thing to pray. Next time you get down on your hands and knees, say, Lord, show me my sin. Reveal it to me. We have a tendency to cover it up and hide it and, and blame everybody else. We have a tendency to say, man, I haven't got any sins. Really haven't got any. I'm just, I'm okay. I'm all right. I haven't got any. The only way you could say that is if you got your sins washed up right now, tonight, before you came to church, and you got every controversy settled. And that's the only way you can say that. Now, take your Bible and turn to Genesis chapter 4 and watch it again. Here's another thing they do. Here's another thing, though, that causes a controversy between you and God. This is what people do. Take your Bible and turn to Genesis. Turn to Genesis chapter 4. In Genesis chapter 4. And uh, let's pick up verse 4. Let's pick up verse 3. How many are in Genesis 4, 3? Say amen. amen. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel also he brought of the firstling of the flock, and a fat thereof. And the Lord hath respect unto Abel and his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had no respect. And Cain was very wrath, and his countenance fell. You know what happened one day? Came, Cain come along and he said, you know something? I think that I ought to give a sacrifice to God. And I think that he needs one. And I think that... Uh, if a good guy and being a good guy like I am, I think I'll just make a sacrifice. And so he went out in the garden and pulled up a bunch of rutabakers and a bunch of carrots and radishes. And he got a great big old basket full of all the stuff in his garden. And he took it up and piled a bunch of rocks together and he set it up there on that thing and had all his vegetables from his garden that he worked so hard for. And then he bowed down before it. And he said, Lord... Well, you, you accept um, my sacrifice here. I work like a dog for it. And I have faith, but Lord, I work to it. And you, Lord, you ought to accept my faith and my works, Lord, shouldn't you? And he bows his head and waits. And Abel, he sees it. And Abel said, man, i gotta make, I got to give me a sacrifice too. Well, oh, absolutely, i got to have a sacrifice. He's right. What can I get? What can I get? What can I get? Lord, what did you do with Mama and Daddy back there in the garden when you kicked them out of the garden? Lord, what did you do when they sinned? And something just seemed to come in there and say, Well, Abel, you know, uh, there had to be bloodshed. And remember how they made skins for Adam and Eve and uh, made skins for them? Uh, don't you think blood will do? And Abel says, Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. It's the blood of the lamb. That's what it is. And so he ran and got the blood from that little lamb, took it and cut its throat and put it up on the rocks and the blood ran down the side of the lamb and it was bleeding there, dying. And Abel said, Now Lord, you know, I ought to go to hell. I ought to go to hell, I ought to burn. I ought to go right straight to hell and burn. But Lord, you know, I pray that you just accept the blood of the lamb. Will it be okay? And then, bam, down came fire out of heaven and took that lamb and burned it up. And Abel jumped up and said, Ha, 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 oh, I'm washed in the blood of the lamb. I'm clean, I'm safe, I'm okay. And Cain looked over. He said, well, you religious hypocrite, who do you think you are? <laughs> what? What's wrong with me? Yeah, yeah. We did. He got mad. Why? God says, Why is thy countenance what? Fallen. Verse 5. And Cain into his offering he had no respect. And Cain was very last and his countenance was fallen. Do you know how folks get a controversy going? They just get mad. They just get mad. Here you are. Here's you, and here's your wife. And you say something. And he goes, rah, rah, rah. You know what he's doing? He's avoiding the issue. He's getting mad. He's avoiding the issue. 
He didn't want to talk to you about it. I don't want to talk about it. And then he gets mad. You know what you are doing, bud? You're just avoiding the issue. She wants to talk about it. Come on, ladies. Come on, ladies. I'll say it again. She wants to talk about it. Louder, ladies. Louder. You want to talk about it? Yes, you do want to talk about it. You say, I want to talk about it. I want to talk about it. I want to talk about it. And it ain't settled till you talk about it. Say amen. You betcha. It ain't settled till you talk about it. It ain't settled. You can get mad at God. You can get mad at Him and mad at Him and mad at Him. But it won't settle the issue. Until you just say, Oh God. Oh God, I know. It's my fault. Oh God, forgive me. And then, blam! The controversy will be settled. Over, done, through it, finished, and over, nothing more to do. Don't you want to settle the issue? Or do you want to settle it over there? If you don't settle it here, you will settle it over there. One or the other. In Kalispell, Montana, two young men, about 18, 19 years old, went on a robbery spree. And they went out and robbed some houses. One boy was in a wheelchair. Went out and robbed some houses. Took the stuff and hid it. Went out and robbed another house. Took the stuff and hid it. One boy decided he was going to carry a gun. And these were... His dad was the pastor of a church there in town. And one night out stealing, he didn't think anybody was home. And the next door neighbor, this guy had said, I'm going to be gone, will you watch my house for me? And the next door neighbor heard some noise over there and started walking up. Walked up to the pickup, that boy grabbed that pistol Stuck it out thick and went blam, 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 blam. He emptied the pistol on that guy's head. Dropped him dead. Six times right there in the parking lot. And his brother got out of the pickup, come around, and he emptied his gun on him too. Two brothers. They didn't have any idea who those two brothers were. Those brothers are their daddies. A preacher and man, these are slick, nice, I mean, handsome, beautiful, and one's in a wheelchair, and the police went everywhere looking for leads. They couldn't get the least lead of who it was. Went by one month, two months, three months, four months, five months, six months, seven months, eight months. Went by a year and a half. They didn't have any idea who did that murder. And that Holy Spirit started saying, are you going to settle it? 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 Or are you going to keep the controversy going? And they both come to the police and confessed and said, we kill him. And then they went in jail. And both of them got down on their knees and said, oh God, will you forgive me for killing that man? Will he forgive? He forgive David for killing Uriah the Hittite. And he'd forgive you. God forgive him. They got it settled. It's over with. It's done. It's true. It's finished. They're forgiven. Thank God they're forgiven. It's over. Say what I mean. When they go to the judgment seat of Christ, the Lord's already forgiven them, so He can't bring it up. He won't bring it up. He forgets your sin. And how can you give an account over that? You won't. Because you settled it here. Do you know what some of you are doing? Some of you are saying, Well, preacher, I think they should have just went, kept right on lying and kept right on pretending that they were good little church boys and that nobody had ever found out and nobody would ever know. And there would still be a controversy between them and God and there will be no peace in heart and mind and soul until a controversy settled. Do you want to settle a controversy tonight? Or do you just want to keep right on going, right on going, right on going? I'll tell you how. There's a cause, and there's a course, 
And there's the curse. The, the curse of the controversy is this. Take your Bible and turn to Genesis chapter 4 and look at verse 9. Genesis chapter 4, verse 9. Let's go and get verse 7. Uh, uh, now let's get verse 8. Hey, Genesis 4, 8. If you're there, say amen. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it come to pass while they were in the field that Cain rose up against his brother and what? Shoot him. There was a... Because God would not accept Cain's sacrifice. And you know what the course of sin is? The course of sin is to get worse. Sin never gets any better. Sin never leaves you for the better. Sin always leaves you with worse shape than it found you in. Never do you come out saying, Oh man, I'm better off for doing that. No, you ain't. Sin always makes you worse. Cain got worse. That's the course of sin. And the curse of sin is a couple days went by. He was out there, down in the garden there, and had his hole, and he was holding the radishes. And along come Abel. Abel goes, Ha! I am saved. Yes, I know I'm saved. I'm washed in the blood of the Lamb. Yes, I am. About that time, Cain looked up, saw his brother coming down through there. And he said, I hate you, 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 I hate you. And he killed him with a hoe. You know what the curse of sin is? It brings forth death. And it will bring forth death in you. The soul that sinneth shall die. The wages of sin is death curse for sin, brother, is death if you're a Christian. What's the curse of sin if you're lost? It's hell. you got a controversy between you and God. And you're lost. There is a controversy. You're lost. The Bible says, the wrath of God abideth upon them. John chapter 3. The Bible says, enemies. Romans chapter 5. Bible says over there when the thing's over and finished and done because the controversy was not settled it says bind him hand and foot and cast him in the outer darkness. If you're here tonight and you're lost you've got a controversy between you and God and if you don't settle that controversy you'll go to hell and pay for your own sins. You ought to settle the controversy. It can be settled, 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 settled now. Then he will forgive you of all your sins and make you clean, clean, clean got to settle the controversy. You say, what's the cure? Here's the cure. Turn to Isaiah. Turn to Isaiah. And turn to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. And this is for a Christian. This is for an unsaved man. This is for anybody. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18 says, Now you there? Say amen. Come now. Do you say come later on? Did he say come tomorrow? Did he say come two, day, two weeks from now? Or did he say come now? Now! 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 Christian, now! Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as white. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, though the old man putrefied is leprosy. Lord, say you're a leper. You're covered from leprosy from the top of your head to the bottom of your toe. There's a controversy. But I'm reasonable. I'll forgive you and wash you in my blood. And I'll make you as white and white and pure and clean as snow. 
You know what the cure is? Pull your heart out to God and get it settled and name the thing and get it over with and put it under the past and walk out that door and say, Lord, it's settled. Can you, can you do that? Every eye closed and every head bowed. My text says tonight, for the Lord hath a controversy. The, law, the song says, nothing between, nothing between my Lord and my Savior. Now, I believe that. I believe what I'm preaching. You can get it settled. Get a, get everything patched up, lock, stock, and barrel. But you you got to talk it over with him. you got to name it. And you've got to get it settled and finished and done. Maybe right now, maybe there's a Christian, and there's some controversy, there's some thing, some sin that's in your life that you've committed and you're guilty and, and you ought to get the thing right and you just put it off and put it off and put it off and you're just ignoring the whole issue. You're just ignoring it. How about tonight saying, I'll ignore it no longer, Lord. I'll ignore it no longer. Yes, I will, Lord. Please wash me and cleanse me and put it under your precious blood. And by your grace, I'll never do it again. Is there somebody like that tonight? Say, preacher, will you please pray for me? Amen. Raise your hand. God spoke to your heart. That's you. Put your hand up. Say, pray for me, preacher. Pray for me that I'll go lock, stock, and barrel. Amen. Amen. Is there somebody else? Somebody else? I suppose the rest of you, you've all you've named it, you've got it down here, all under the blood tonight, and there is no controversy. But maybe you're just afraid to raise your hand tonight. Maybe you're just afraid. I, I want to encourage you in it. You get that thing settled, and don't ignore it, don't pretend that it's not so. Get it straight across, waist high, and get it over with and done. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for saving my soul, Lord. I thank you in the best way I know how. Lord, I thank you there is no controversy between you and me in any matter that I know of. But, Lord, there is one, Lord. Uh, there might be, Lord. You know, sometimes I don't see things uh, uh, like I ought to see things. And, Lord, I pray that you just open up my heart and open up my understanding. And, Lord, I pray that you'd reveal it to me. And, Lord, I pray that you'd give me grace to repent and turn from it, Father. And, and uh, never no more and get the thing right, Father, with you. In Jesus' precious name I pray and for his sake. Amen. Let's all stand. Now maybe you're here tonight and you're lost. You're lost. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. You're going to go out that door and you have not settled the controversy. You have not. You're going to walk out there lost again. You're saying, you're saying to God, no. You're saying to Jesus Christ, no. And if you don't submit, you don't submit, it's going to get harder when you walk out the door. That's the law. The harder and longer you put it off, the harder it's going to be. Do it right now. Step out of your seat right now and come saying, Yes, I will to Jesus Christ. He died for your sins. You believe that? You're a sinner and you can't save yourself. You believe that? He went into the grave for your sins and he arose to save your soul from hell. Will you receive his death as a payment for your sins? Do you preach it's that easy? Yeah, it's that easy. It's that easy. Will you trust him? He died for you. Now come on, step out of your seat and come as we sing. 116 in your hymnal. 166 in your hymnal. People are afraid. They're afraid. They're just deathly afraid. They're afraid of what people are going to think of them. If I walk that aisle, people are going to think bad of me. No, they won't. 
No, they won't. No, they won't. No, they won't. They'll be happy. Inside of them, they'll go, oh, 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 yes. That's what they do. See, they said amen. I believe they believe what they said. They wouldn't think bad about you a second. If you stepped out of that aisle, stepped out of there, and come down front and received Jesus Christ as your Savior, they'd say, oh, thank God, oh, thank God, oh, thank God. See, you're still afraid. Fear. Just deathly afraid of what somebody's going to think of you. And you'll just stay there and stay there and stay there. You'll walk out that door last. Because you're afraid that somebody's going to think that you're a sinner. Well, I'm a sinner. I'm a saved sinner. And we're all sinners, but we're saved sinners. Now, how about you becoming a saved sinner? Won't you step out of your seat and come? Or are you just going to put it off again? There's a controversy. There's a controversy. And it's your sin. He's died for it. It can be settled. It's paid for. He loved you enough to die for you. If you accept him and accept his death as a payment for your sin, the controversy will be something. So will you step out of your seat and come as we say thinking about the message? Are you thinking about what you heard? Is there a controversy? It's just hard to believe that this congregation, everybody here, nothing between, no controversy, nothing needs treated, everything's clear, clean, possible, hard to believe. Perhaps something needs treated in your life. Give you one more chance. Let's do it. You will not be sorry. Sing just another verse or so before we pray and go. And you know and God knows. I don't know. Brother Bemis don't know. All he did is preach what God put on him. Is there? Please get it settled. Come on. Come on, one more verse. Let's get her settled. Please step out and come, would you? Okay, two youngsters that you must pray for need a lot of prayer tonight. Charlie Monk, five years of age, uh, with some kidney difficulties. They can't seem to get cleared up, and they're running ten tests on little Charlie to try to figure out what it is somewhere today. I'm not sure just how many, uh, but he does need your prayers. Also, Joshua Leithley, 11 years of age, and uh, he never woke up this morning. He is in very serious condition. Um, possibly a brain tumor. Good Samaritan Hospital in Zanesville. So Brother Steve's 11-year-old son, Joshua, in need of a lot of prayer. Very serious condition. Will you pray? And listen, if there's something that would hinder your prayer life, I regard iniquity in my heart. Lord, will not hear me. Well, the Lord must hear you. You need to beg God tonight for these youngsters. So if there's something between your soul and the Savior... Well, let's get her settled down by your bedside. Do it some way or another. Let's get the board clean, clear between you and the Lord. And 
get busy and pray for these little fellows tonight. Would you do that? Bow our heads for closing prayer. Be careful as you leave. It's dark outside. Watch your children also. And be careful at the road uh, as you exit. Uh, not the easiest uh, way to exit here, but we've never had any trouble. Let's pray and ask God one more time to keep us safe. Gene Brown, again, please. Amen. Thank you for coming our way. You are dismissed. Don't forget, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, do your best to make them all. Lord bless you. That's it.